Looking at a picture involves a bit of mystery, even more so when the image comes to us from a faraway place and time. Who painted it and why? Was the subject real or imagined? What actually can a painting really tell us? As it turns out, this portrait here at the Indiana University Art Museum has a rather intriguing history. It was painted in 1803 by the French painter Elisabeth Louise Vigée Lebrun. That it was made by a woman painter would seem unusual enough. We tend to think of women artists as a modern invention. But a person seeing the painting back in the 1800s would have known that there is more to it than meets the eye. Vigée Le Brun is the most important woman painter of the 18th century, certainly in France. By 1775, she somehow came into the royal circles and was painting portraits of Marie Antoinette. Yes, that Marie Antoinette. Which so pleased the queen that she unofficially became the official painter to the queen. And by, I think it's 1783, she's accepted into the Royal Academy, which is a big step. Uh, because this was a hierarchical system and very much governed by men. So she really rose to the top. Of course, the woman in this painting is not Marie Antoinette, nor is she French, nor royalty for that matter. She is Mrs. Chinnery, British, and a friend of the painter. Margaret Chinnery um, moved in the highest circles of both French and English society, um, and she herself was very cultured and evidently um, very comfortable in those societal circles. So, so people seeing her portrait would have immediately recognized that. People would have noticed a few other things. For one, Mrs. Chinnery's dress is unusual. Rather than wearing an English-style dress, she is wearing something French. What we see Mrs. Shinnery wearing is silk. It's a silk velvet. And um, I would suggest that Vigée Lebrun had her finger on the pulse of fashion change and probably uh, suggested to her sitters styles that were leading the way, that were somewhat avant-garde, maybe not seen among most women. What's fascinating is the manner in which Vigée Lebrun presents Mrs. Chinnery and not simply with respect to fashion. She could have painted her subject like this, or like this, or like that, but she did not. Vigée Le Brun is famous for painting maternal subjects. She painted herself with her only daughter, Julie, many times, yet she chose not to portray Mrs. Chinnery with her then four children, but portrayed her with a book. And this is where it gets really interesting. And when you look at the book closely, you'll see that um, what's most visible on it is the authoress, Madame de Genly. The book that Madame Chinnery is reading is a handwritten text that uh, Madame de Genly created for Mrs. Chinnery, really as evidence of their friendship. Aha! The sitter is not only well-to-do and pretty, she enjoys literature. And she's not just reading any book, but the book of a friend and a leading woman author at that, Madame Stéphanie de Genlis. Her first book was in 1782, Adèle Theodore, which really set her on the path and made her the educationalist of the period. And it sets out all the ways in which um, this fictional uh, French noblewoman is raising her children, which are very much of that Enlightenment period, but different from the way children were usually raised. Adèle and Théodore had a profound effect on Mrs. Chinnery, who raised her own children according to its methods. Their affinities were so strong that Madame de Genly sent a copy of each of her books to Mrs. Chinnery, who in turn immortalized their friendship by appearing with her dear friend's first gift, the handmade manuscript you see in the painting. I suspect that was a choice, um, perhaps in consultation with Vijay Lebrun. Um, perhaps Vijay suggested you should be holding this book because she's your good friend. 
Um, you've raised your children according to her principles. Let's do this. And I suspect they all agreed this was a perfect way to pose. Whatever the cause might have been, the result is really quite unprecedented. A beautiful painting as much as a record of a particular circumstance. This marks a confluence of friendship between a woman writer from France, a woman painter from France, and this English Francophile who was extremely intelligent, spoke French fluently, very educated, very musical. As you encounter this portrait, or any painting, take another look. Like a treasure chest, it will surrender its mysteries if you pause to unlock it.